Hey everybody, it's Justin from Bittner Bill, and today we're gonna to be continuing our ultimate trailer build and doing the flooring. Now with trailer flooring, you could keep it bare wood like this, but it's really easy to dent it, uh, stain it, and it's super slippery. I have bit it on this back trailer door many, many times, so my tailbone will be very happy if I have a much better, grippier product on here. And so, you know, some people to protect their investment, they paint it, they put epoxy down, um, some do metal, but I think that the best flooring that you can possibly do is the vinyl uh, coin flooring. And so that's what we're gonna be installing today. Uh, that product will protect your subfloor. It's going to be easy to clean so I can just hose it out. Um, it's gonna resist stains and it's very grippy. So I'm not gonna, you know, end up on my rear on this back trailer door several times a season. So I reached out to the best company that makes the top of the line model for this, and that is Better Life Technology. They make the G Floor product. And lucky me, they said yes, that they would participate in this video. So thank you very much for that. Um, so while this is sponsored, I'm the one who asked them. Uh, and this product is specifically made for trailers. They of course make products for, you know, sheds, garages, basements, boats. Um, they even have customized uh, printed products that are awesome. Um, so definitely check out their stuff. But the big pull here was that they make a trailer blend. And why is that very important? This has crazy temperature swings. This is an oven during the day. And as soon as I lower this back door, it drops like 20 degrees in two minutes. Um, during the winter time, there's cold air that's flowing underneath this floor and freezing it super, super cold. So there's a ton of expansion and contraction going on with such an uninsulated vehicle that you need a specially form formulated product that's going to resist that expansion and contraction. And so when you get a high quality flooring like G floors, you know that it's not gonna um, crack, warp, bunch up uh, due to the temperature changes and stuff. So that's why I reached out to them for this video. So let's go ahead and get installing this flooring today on Bittner Bell. So why vinyl? Vinyl flooring from G Floor is gonna make my tailbone happy by adding a slip resistant surface, particularly this one, it has all this texture on the coins. It's probably made in the USA in Kansas. It's 100% solid vinyl, which is really important because many products out there contain paper or clay fillers that can cause the product to break down over time. So this is a durable lifelong product. And with being 100% solid, if you were to scratch it, you're not gonna see it because the color goes all the way through the product. Uh, it has a heat welded polyester backing so that when you adhere this to the floor with glue, it just soaks up the glue and all these fibers. And it's gonna create a permanent bond that's not gonna slip or bunch. This is gonna protect my subfloor from damage and wood rot. It's super easy to repair and I'll show you that later in the video. That's why you wanna keep some scraps from the install. Um, just because if anything ever did happen to it, it's really, really easy to make a seamless uh, repair patch. And of course it looks really nice. I want my trailer to look good. So that's uh, always a nice pro. So let's talk about pattern just for a second because there is some considerations to think of. There's actually some functional differences between these. Uh, so in the coin flooring that I chose, I chose the small coin that has texture on it. So I get the most amount of traction grip that I can when I'm walking on here. Um, we work in the snow and rain a lot and so we need that traction uh, in the trailer. Uh, there's a larger coin as well that doesn't have the traction on it and so I opted for the, the more traction based one. But the other reason is since the coins are so close together, if you have casters, which I think I'm gonna do some caster items in there, um, it will roll across it pretty smooth because there's very little gappage. Now, on the, like the flip side, you have the very aggressive diamond tread. And this is really cool. I was really torn between the two because this has great grip to it. Um, but since there's a little bit bigger gaps, if you're thinking about using casters, you know, it's gonna get a little bit more of that bumpy stuff. Now that's not a deal breaker on it. They're just a little different, right? And they have different looks too. So this is kind of the more industrial, rugged, uh, hardcore one, which still is very cool. Uh, then we have more of the like faux leather type of look, which is neat. Uh, different types of wood planking. So this is a very cool look. And of course they also have very kind of like bold extreme um, different pattern designs 
that are on their website. So you can check these out. I was tempted by this too, but I, I, I want that grip on here. So uh, I like making statements with my stuff. Now this stuff is used in garages like crazy, um, which I totally get because any liquids that fall on it, I mean, even like antifreeze and oil from your car, you can just hose that right out or clean it up very easily. It'll wipe right up. Um, you can use water, soap, and you can even use engine cleaner on this without hurting this. An engine cleaner gets rid of everything. So very cool stuff. And considering how bad my epoxy floor in here turned out, uh, this stuff has my wheels turning for in here in the shop for the future. But let's get to uh, installing this product on the trailer. Before we start installing this product, it is imperative that we do the prep work. Do not skip the prep work. If you're investing your money in a quality product like this, you wanna make sure that you do your due diligence, do the prep work so that it turns out perfect. The very first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna go evaluate all the screws in the floor. And I'm gonna see if any of them are protruding really bad. And this one is crooked and is really high up. And so that's going to create a big hump on my flooring when I put it in. I wanna make sure that it's completely flush. So rather than trying to drive it in, I'm actually gonna remove it. And this has a very large head, so I'm going to take a large um, recess bit. And I'm gonna put it back in and see if we can get it to now be flush with the floor. Okay, so now we're pretty good. After screws, we wanna check all of our seams where two pieces of wood come together. This one is very good, but even on very good ones, we definitely wanna take a sander to it just for a minute, just to make sure that it's good. This area, however, is not good. And this is definitely at least an eighth of an inch drop, only in this corner of the front of the trailer. Um, it's only from like here to the end. And I tried jumping on the wood right here to think, oh, maybe this is bowed up and then I could sink some screws into it to drive it down, but uh, it's not moving. So regardless of the reason, I uh, could either sand it, which would cause this to go down, or what I think I might do, uh, because it's just this small triangle at the front, I'm gonna smear some Bondo on here and completely level it and then sand it down uh, that way I get a much more permanent, flat, level result. Um, that might be a lot more than maybe what you're willing to do, but you know, I'm trying to make this as perfect as possible. The next thing that I also have to do is remove anything that I have bolted into the floor. So I have these D-rings here, and so I'm gonna go under the trailer and unbolt these and just completely remove them. And after the flooring's installed, I will go back and cut out the hole and reinsert these. That way it's a very clean install. Now, depending on the state of your flooring, if you have any damage to the floor, you might wanna add some Bondo or wood filler in there just so that you get a smooth surface. You don't wanna have any divots. And then as a last step, put on your PPE and hit everything with some 220 sandpaper. Um, you know, give it a light sanding just so we know we're getting any random uh, you know, large splinters or anything. All right, I have spent a few hours and I might've gone overboard, but I filled every single hole. I recessed every single one of the screws that are on this floor. And every time that a board met each other, uh, I filled in that crack and made sure to sand it pretty well so that I have a perfectly flat surface. I did put a whole bunch of Bondo in this corner over here that was really low and then feathered it out this way with my sander that way that I don't have a low spot, um, which I'm a little disappointed in the manufacturer of this trailer, but hey, you do what you gotta do in order to make your flooring look perfect, right? So let's go ahead and get the flooring, roll it out, and then that way it can acclimate over the next few hours inside the trailer. So my buddy Luke and I just rolled all of this out, as you've seen in Fast Forward. Um, you have to get down on the ground too and kind of push the kinks out. It's almost like when you're installing a uh, glass cover on top of your cell phone. You know how there's those air pockets and you gotta push them over to the side. Think of this as the exact same thing. So we got it where it's laying flat in the middle. There's a couple little 
wrinkles and humps and stuff, but the hope is that overnight that is going to sort itself out. I'm leaving itself a little bit large. Um, I'm not cutting it right now, just because I want it to move and acclimate. Tomorrow when I come out, I will be cutting it at that point. If there's little errors in your cutting, it's okay if you're using trim pieces on the bottom. Just like in your house where you're putting trim along the bottom to hide where your flooring and your wall meet, same thing here. It'll cover up any little mistakes that we make. So uh, I love the look of it already. I'm going to go ahead and leave it like this and we're going to start working on it tomorrow. The back hatch needs a little bit of work before I can apply it to here. I'm actually going to remove the transition flap for this install. And that's because this hinge is just going to get in the way. If you want to have a very clean install, uh, removing this hinge, applying the flooring, and then reapplying the hinge on top of the flooring uh, will look its best. And I'm also going to be applying it to both sides of the transition flap because um, with my business, a majority of the time we're not extending this out uh, for vehicles. Uh, it's just foot traffic. So I want to make sure that this side has traction on it too. It's time to trim all of the excess material that's against the wall. And so what we're going to use is a straight rule. Um, you can use a level or any other sort of metal straight edge. You want to push hard against the wall so we get it as close as possible to the corner. And we're going to take our knife and we're going to glide it along that metal and cut into the vinyl. Now, we want to get it as close as possible to the wall in this initial cut because uh, we can always cut more away later. And this is a blind cut, you know, it's, it's kind of curled here. And so there's going to be a little bit of movement when we take this away. Now, if you make a mistake, and I'm sure I will when I do all this cutting, uh, there is going to be a molding piece that we're going to put here. It could either be wood or aluminum. I'm going to put a three quarter inch aluminum uh, angle iron piece here. And so that is going to hide any little mistakes you do. So I brought the transition flap into the shop because it's small. I figured let's get some better video angles of uh, doing this one. I'll go ahead and even glue this one in here before we actually do the entire trailer. So what I'm going to do for this one is I lined up the bottom edge on this one. There will be trim that goes all the way around. So if my cuts are slightly off, it's okay. I'm going to use a straight rule. Um, you could use a level or any other type of straight edge, and you could also use that when you're doing your cutting inside the trailer itself. Um, but I wanted to kind of make sure that I'm cutting right at the edge, but I don't want to leave extra overhang on this one, uh, just because uh, I'm going to be putting a C-channel uh, strip of aluminum that goes around this unit. So I'm actually cutting right on top of the wood. So you can see I did score it really well, but sometimes it just doesn't want to go. I have been really impressed with how easy this material cuts. Um, I thought that I was going to be exerting a ton of force when doing this, but in reality it's been uh, fairly gentle to make the cuts. In reality, it's the, uh, the backing material that's kind of inhibiting a lot of the cuts. Okay, so we made it up to the top. I'm just slightly over the edge, and now what I can do is I can even just scooch it just a little bit down. Um, when you're moving this material to make it easier, kind of making like a flapping motion uh, gets a little bit of air under there and enables you to kind of move it a little bit easier. Uh, you won't want to do that when it's time to glue, but, you know, for doing an initial lay down process to smooth out, it's very helpful to do it that way. What we're going to be using to affix it to the wood is the G Floor uh, Marine and Outdoor uh, Adhesive. And this stuff goes on really easy. It's water soluble, so you can wash off all of your tools and your hands just with hot running water and soap and it'll come right off. So that is great. It's also 
best to be installed in like the 70 degree range. Uh, today we're up at like 78, so um, that's the best I'm gonna get lately. It's, it's been like on fire here in New Jersey. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold the flooring halfway. So I've poured a small amount on here that I'm gonna spread around. It is a very liquidy product, so to like scoop it again and again is a little more difficult. So what I'm gonna do is just scrape it with the 1 16th inch trowel. And when I get it stuck on the trowel, I'm going over to the edges at that point and pulling it away from the edge because I don't really want a ton of it to gloop off the edge. Here we go. And if you do get a lot of drippage or anything off the sides, it's really easy with just a wet paper towel afterwards to go ahead and wipe it up. So see how I have that line of glue on there? I'm bringing it over to the edge, kind of pushing down and then bringing it towards me. What I want to do is evenly coat this entire piece up to where it meets the rolled over piece of flooring. What I want to do is gently roll this down and as I'm rolling it, I'm pushing it from behind. The big goal is to not have any air bubbles in here at all. Awesome. So on the main trailer, I will then use a hundred pound big roller, uh, but I'm not going to get that up here on the table. So I'm using my smaller edge roller. Um, these are at the big box stores too. They're really good for getting against the wall of the trailer where that big roller probably won't get to. And of course we can just use it right here. So I'm starting at the middle and I'm pushing out. And I'm trying to put a lot of pressure on here because I'm supposed to be using a hundred pound roller, right? So I'm gonna get that hundred pounds of force in here. Now there will be squeeze out, particularly on this one of the glue. And again, like I said, you can just go ahead and use a wet paper towel to just clean it on up. So now let's just do the other side. It's glue time. We have had this in place for at least 24 hours. You need a minimum of at least 12 hours. And what Ben and I are gonna do right now is we're gonna peel this back and fold it over on itself. So go ahead and grab the edge over there, Ben. Okay. Just like this, just bring it back. So this is a lot easier when you have two people. Keep it going. And pull it just a little bit extra, if you can. We want it to go a little bit past the halfway mark. Now, I have this specialty cut section up here at the front. I just undid that. The main goal for us is so that we can spread the glue on this side, flop it back over, and then flip it over to the other side. All right, so the glue is down and troweled. I've let it sit for five minutes. You don't wanna let it skim over, but you do wanna let it sit for a minute. And now what we're gonna do is put the flooring back on. And so boys, what I want you to do is get your body on this side of it. And what we don't wanna do is just throw this on top of it. We want to roll it. So get your hand under all the way to the crease and slowly we're gonna push it forward, okay? Try and like smooth it with your hand as you're going. Hold on, wait for Ben. Ben, go ahead. Okay. There we go, and don't let it flap at the end. Hold it so it doesn't go on its own. 
Okay, great. All right, so thank you, boys. I got it from here. Thank you. So now what we're going to do is take a 100-pound roller and we're going to roll this. We're going to start at the center and we're going to go towards the edge of the wall. I can actually see it pressing it down. Um, so this roller is really important. Don't not do this step. I had seen on some other videos where, you know, people grab like a roll of paper and just use their weight behind it. And I debated doing that myself rather than renting this. Not that it was very expensive, but um, I literally see the effect of it right now. So honestly, I think this is the correct way to do it and the way you should do it too. Now I can tell that in two spots over here, the flooring is actually touching the wall and that's causing it to kink a little bit. So I'm going to trim those two pieces real quick just so that it'll lay flat. If you can see it right here, there's a little bit of a bubble, but that's not because there's something under it. It's because it's actually touching the wall here. So if I give it a small little relief cut, it should eliminate the kink that's happening in here. Okay, and remember I'm gonna be putting trim back down. Uh, see, it extends over to here too. Uh, once I started using the roller, it's really laying this out. So it moved a little bit more towards the wall than I originally had it, which is a good thing, but you just need to trim up the pieces uh, as you start seeing these little areas that are rubbing up against the wall. All right, so now we are doing the same process on the other side. We're gonna pick it up. Gently roll it back, keep walking backwards. We're gonna roll it back until we see the glue. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, I see one. Keep going. Okay. Gotta make sure that we see the glue at all points. Okay. That's good enough. I'll be able to go from there. Thank you, boys. So we're gonna stand behind it, get our hands low. We're gonna roll forward slowly. Looking good. All right, don't let it flop at the end, hold it. All right, great. I'm starting to get a case of the feeling olds. And uh, so if you're like me, the uh, squishy gel knee pads that I'm wearing today definitely helped out my knees because you're gonna be on your knees for quite a while today. Now I didn't remove this cable because it's attached to the tensioned coiled spring that helps lift the trailer door up and down. And unless you're very well versed on that, do not play with it because uh, there's stickers all over it that caution you about severe injury because that thing there's videos out there where like you're messing with it and you do the wrong thing and it just kind of explodes into an unraveling state. So I just always stay away from it. Whenever I have to do something with the cable, I usually put it into my local trailer service place. Um, just because they have the right tools for the job.
I wanted to drive home that this is totally a doable DIY project for anybody. This really was not that hard. Um, the main things to look for is to make sure that you have a flat surface, that you smooth out the flooring really well with a good heavy roller. And then when it comes to cutting, that's really your only other area where you could make a mistake. And as you see right here, I made a small mistake as I was cutting this, it notched in. And so this looks pretty bad, but because I'm using a trim piece, this is a three quarter inch piece. As soon as I put it down, it looks awesome. It looks finished. Uh, it looks like it's supposed to be there. So any small mistakes that you have will be hidden. So don't worry about tackling a project like this. You can definitely do it. My first step is I'm gonna trim off all the excess on the trailer door. See, I'm starting to get away from it a little bit. Don't make your cuts super long because if I had continued on what I was doing, I would have messed up. Uh, so I try to maybe go about 12 inches at a time and then recheck again. It's okay for me to see a little bit of wood on this because I'm using that trim piece all the way around, but obviously I don't want to screw up too much. So the trim work is all done. I want to reinsert those bolts that I removed for my lock mechanism. So what I'm gonna do is I'm taking a very small but longer drill bit, because this is a very thick uh, space, and I'm just going to lightly drill through without pushing too hard, because I just wanna make a hole in the vinyl on the other side. Then on the other side, I can take a knife and cut it away so that I can get the bolt through. These were pretty small bolt holes, and the holes that I made are even pretty small to see. Um, but I don't know if I would have felt it by pushing down on this side, and so that's why I did those holes. When installing the molding, the end of the cut is what is going to the outside corner of the wood. And so when you take a measurement of the length of this wood, you're measuring for this outside measurement, not the inside measurement. And I've cut this at a 45 degree angle. And when I place my next piece right here, there we go, they match up perfectly. Now on this door, I'm going to put, um, first I'm gonna drill and then put screws in right here but I'm not going to do it on this side. And that's because it, when the door folds up, it's going to sit flush right here. And I don't want the screws protruding on it that would inhibit the movement here. I'm gonna be using stainless steel screws because this is a wet area and I don't want it to rust over time. So just like this aluminum, uh, that's not gonna rust, neither will the screws. I'm installing all of my screws on 24 inch spacings for right now. I'll probably come back around and do it at 12 inch spacings, but I wanna get it all done, make sure everything closes and opens fine first. Because I left that cable attachment on the door, I do have to notch out a piece of my trim right here into this shape. To do that, I'm gonna be using a jigsaw with a metal scroll blade in it. I'm gonna do two straight cuts and then I'm gonna swoop over from both directions to finish up the cut. All right, the trailer door is done. Looks beautiful. Very happy with it. Let's get on to the inside. Here's a quick tip. If you have a really long run that goes to an angle, uh, what you wanna do is cut that angle first because you, know, you might need to play with your cuts over there. Once you have your angle there, you can just lay this down and let the two pieces overlap because a straight cut is always easy to make. So we're just gonna mark where these two meet. 
make a straight cut here and it'll fit perfectly. So let's take a look at what to do if we damage a piece of the flooring. So if some sharp object comes in here and damages your flooring all up, I'm actually having a hard time even with this sharp chisel to damage it, so yay G floor. Okay, so let's say we have some damage here. We see it. Uh, what we're going to do is keep some scraps from when you're doing your install. They don't even have to be that big, but you can obviously utilize them in the future if you need to. And what you're going to want to do is find the match in the pattern. And it's not always uh, in one direction. You might have to rotate a couple times to try and figure out exactly what it is. And this seems like a match. So what I'm going to try and do is get my coin directly on top of there and I'll look at all the other coins to try and match it up. Now, what I'm gonna need to do is cut through both layers at the same time. So I'm gonna take some double-sided sticky tape right now and use it to help me hold it in place. I guess it was that way. All right, so there's my damage. There we go, so now we spread out the sticky tape to kind of try and help it. And what I'm going to do is use a straight edge. And I'm going to try and just cut around the area that's damaged, but I'm gonna press really hard and try and make a straight line in each case. I need to penetrate both layers. Okay. So now when I remove this, I'm going to try and keep it in that direction. That way I don't lose my bearing on it. So we're putting it just like that. Take this away. Uh, this sticky tape will be able to come up. Um, it might be a little bit of a pain to clean, but I wanted to use it because I really wanted to make sure that I had it really stuck together. And obviously this one's going to be glued to the wood. So it's going to be a little bit hard to get up. Okay, so will this fit perfectly in there? Yes. So obviously I'm going to need to clean this up a little bit and apply glue underneath, but it did get rid of the damage section and we did meet the, the coin pattern here. Will it be perfectly hidden? No, uh, but it does do a very good job in repairing the overall surface. So wow, 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 it is all done. It looks phenomenal. I could not be happier with it. It took the course of the weekend to install everything and get it to final product, but I'm so glad that I took my time with doing all the prep work beforehand because I have a perfectly flat surface. There is not a single imperfection in here. I cannot see where the boards transition, nothing. So spending that extra time and making sure that you have a perfect surface before you put it down will help you achieve that perfect final finish look. Now, I really, really think that this is a easy DIY project. It does take a weekend, but it isn't that hard. So anybody can do this. And especially if you're using moldings around the bottom, that's really the only place that you can make any sort of noticeable mistake. So if you're using that, that will cover up any mistake that you might have. Uh, I really have to say thank you so much to Better Life Technologies for supplying this G floor. Like I said, I approached them. I had done my research before we started this video because I really wanted the best product that I could get for the trailer that's not gonna crack or go bad over time. I wanted something that was texturized and something that was durable, and that is this product. It's formulated for trailers. And can't stress that enough that I picked them and they were nice enough to send it to me. So thank you so much, G Floor. And if you're interested in getting G Floor for your product, for your garage, for your trailer, for a basement, for shed, for your boat, um, go to their website, it's bltllc.com, and on there you can find authorized retailers of the G Floor product to, you know, supply for you for your project. So, thanks so much to G Floor. I really hope that you guys enjoyed the video. There will be more videos for the trailer build out. It's still a little empty, obviously. Uh, so I hope you'll stay tuned to that. And of course, stay safe in the shop. I will see you in the next video.